This is Phenomenal TV and it's Idols Top 6. Sit down with none other than Mangaliso. Mangaliso, welcome to Phenomenal TV. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, congratulations. If I was a school teacher, I would have given you three out of five because there are five important stages in the Idols competition. You got the golden ticket, you made it to top 16, you got to the top 10. But the other two, unfortunately, you missed out on the showstopper and the finale. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling sad. That's the first emotion, obviously, because sometimes in as much as it is a competition and you understand the nature of it, that eventually somebody has to, you know, win and that's only one person. But I mean, you you don't ever anticipate to get out of the competition early. Well, for me, that is. But I mean, I'm really grateful for the experience. I learned so much in the competition. Like, it was fun. It was really, really fun and I enjoyed myself. So I'm chilled about it, yeah. Take me through your, your music journey as a whole. When did you start? When did you find out that you want to be a musician? So, first of all, I was singing at church for the longest of time, ever since I was a kid, hallelujah. And then I moved to Bloemfontein to go and study, and then that's where like the professional side of my music career started. I started being, doing BV work, um, I started doing theater shows here and there. So that's when like I professionally started taking it seriously, and then I decided, you know what? Let me now branch out and try something, you know, outside of this little place called Bloemfontein and go bigger. And that is South Africa. And I think Idols was the perfect platform for that for me. How did you prepare uh, going into the auditions? Because obviously you need to be mentally prepared and most of all technically prepared. How did you prepare? Um, I think technically, obviously having, doing music for the longest time, that was kind of preparation on its own. But also, I don't think I did prepare myself. Like, I only started properly preparing myself, like, after theater week, once I found out I was in the top 16. I was just like, oh, so Vela Vela, I have potential of doing this thing. So yeah, I started then preparing myself after theater week. Um, but other than that, technically, I was just doing my thing all along, yeah. What was the most challenging thing about being in the competition? The most challenging thing about being in the competition, first of all, was to deal with the fame, so to speak. Having people saying whatever they want to say to you at whatever time they want, because I'm a person who really keeps to themselves, so that for me was quite challenging. And also having to prepare every week for something new, um, it's a lot of hard work. You just see Sunday, but then during the week we are preparing with this choreography, there's this and this and that. So like for me, adjusting to the hard work and to the fast life of the TV business was kind of challenging but yeah it was cool. Speaking of adjusting uh, you said your background was church and you were a backing vocalist how was the adjustment now uh, having to do pop music and live shows week in week out? Um, it was quite difficult because you do come with a lot of influence but then I also believe that music is music and that if you are a musician and a true musician you are able to you know try and mold yourself in whatever way to make that performance perfect so for me it was challenging but I mean I thought to myself I am a musician I can do this so it was chilled, it was chilled. You arguably had the one of the best voices this season, according to me. Where do you think it went wrong, though? Where do I think it went wrong? Um, I, I, that's a difficult one to answer. But I don't think there's anything that went wrong. I just think South Africa had a preference, and I just wasn't it, and I'm okay with that, yeah. Showstopper was last night. What song had you prepared, and what was going to be that showstopping moment for you? Um, the song I had chosen, I was very really excited about, um, but it was Johnny by Yemi Alade. It's a Nigerian Afrobeat song. I was really excited about that. The choreography was great. Um, but yeah, that was the song I was going to be doing yesterday. Uh, now that you're out, uh, what's the plan going forward? Uh, are you going to be going straight into recording music or you have other plans? Yeah, recording music is part of the plan, but also I do theatre, so I want to go back to that space because I thoroughly enjoy that. So yeah, those two are my main priority right now. I do have other plans, um, you know, long-term plans, but for now I just want to concentrate on my theatre and my music. What sound are you going to be going for? Gospel or Neo Soul. I'm undecided. I have content for both, so I still have to just pray about it and think about it. 
Well, obviously, South Africa has been behind you for you to get this far. Anything you'd like to say to all your fans, all your supporters that made sure you go to the top 10? Yeah, definitely. I want to say thank you for putting me to where I am. Um, it was really a great experience. And without the fans, I really wouldn't have, you know, been where I am. So I'm really grateful. And also just to promise them that it's not going to be the last time they see my face. And it's not going to be the last time that they hear my voice. So thank you so much, South Africa. Well, definitely, it's not going to be the last time you hear and see Mangaliso's face. This was Phenomenal TV. I'm Tanaka Dennis. Nothing but phenomenal.